Hi everyone, it's Catherine. So today we're not going to be talking much about hygiene per se. We are. It's a little bit of like a not recommending products per se, but more of like we're going into a more of an education mode. So if you're here for a long time, this is going to be a pretty long video. Sit back, relax, have some water, have some tea. We're going to learn a little bit more about the morals and ethical things of people who do not understand people collecting stuff. So as you guys can see by the title, hoarding versus collecting and how the word hoarding is always used interchangeably with people who have a vast amount of products. And I kind of want to settle this for like the final way. Making a video and then one day if someone were to comment, you're such a hoarder, they're gonna get this video. Hey boo, how are you? So we're gonna start with the definition of collecting. What is a collection? What defines a collection? Now normally by the research that I have looked up, all the links will be down in the description below. I have my laptop here as well, so I will be reading off of this. So if you see me off camera, that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of blind too. So we're gonna pop the glasses back on. You can see the ring light, but I like seeing the ring light when I have my glasses on. Don't mind it too much. So typically what a collection is, is that the items are centered around a specific theme. You have baseball cards, you have expensive shoes that cost a redundant amount of money and people collect it and then they just have it displayed perfectly. We have video games, you have little knickknack coins, you got it, anything you can honestly collect if you find pleasure and treasure into it, all right? And normally with a collection, people are boasting about it. They take pride in their collection. So normally they'll have it very nicely organized or in their way of how they organize it. It doesn't have to be like super spot on, like no dust at all. They're arranged, they're stored, and they're organized to the person's ability. For the impact of someone's life, normally the items usually have a very pleasurable, very positive, that's why people collect in the first place. Collecting usually does not cause financial distress. It's just like a hobby per se. If you love playing guitar, that's amazing. If you want to collect guitars, but you don't know how to play guitar, you can still do that. That's still a hobby. Now let's go ahead and dive deep into the definition of hoarding. Now I got this definition from the DSM-5. I actually learned this in one of my psychopathology and psychodiagnostics class. I took two of them for children and adults. So I do have a good background of my knowledge with the uh, disorders in the DSM-5. If you don't know what the DSM-5 is, this is what it is right there. <laughs> I, um, I'm really bad at explaining things. But for the textbook definition of hoarding, it is actually a disorder. And not many people actually know that. Many people think that it stems from OCD, which actually they recently, I think it was like a couple years ago where they um, kind of took it separately because people with OCD aren't the same as people with a hoarding disorder. Please look it up for more information. I'm not too focused on those two. I did a good job at getting a good grade, but like my memory slipped up, okay? This is more focused on hoarding disorder. So we're gonna call it HD from now on. HD is characterized by persistent difficulty discarding or parting with possessions, regardless of their actual value as a result of a strong perceived need to save the items and to distress associated with discarding them. For example, symptoms of hoarding disorder result in the accumulation of a large number of possessions that congest and clutter active living areas to the extent that their intended use is substantially compromised. As I mentioned before, a hoarding disorder takes over the living spaces of the home, let's say your kitchen, your living room, your bedroom, the hallways, and it keeps them from being unusable for everyday living, like cooking, eating, relaxing, sleeping, and so much more. But it is not the same as like normal clutter. So normal clutter is defined by a large group of usually unrelated or marginally related objects piled together in a disorganized fashion. Let's say for example, that drawer that's like underneath the coffee table, you know there's a whole bunch of random things in there, pens, papers, receipts, but you're just like, it's fine. You're not stressed over it, okay? Like one day you'll come back and be like, yeah, I got it, this will be fine. So hoarding disorder is different from collecting as collecting is organized, systematic, you chose to collect it. Even though some collectors may have a similar amount of possessions as someone with hoarding disorder, collecting does not produce the clutter, distress, or impairment that hoarding disorder does. People with hoarding disorder do not feel like there is a problem at all, and they don't feel like their life is being negatively impacted, and they're not normally looking for help. So for example, if you put someone who has hoarding disorder in a 
uh, cognitive behavioral therapy type of thing, it wouldn't work because they do not believe that there is something wrong with what they're doing. And normally it's like the family members, once again, trying to seek help and trying to get rid of the clutter for them. The most common things are clothes, shoes, informational hoarding like things that are free like napkins brochures mails books and there's also a thing called informational hoarding like online hoarding um like bookmarks if you save like a hundred things of bookmarks you just like star on your uh, browser and you actually never end up using it there's this doctor i have a video of it i actually got inspiration from the video i'll have it all linked down below you guys i was like whoa like you can, like it's not even like physical hoarding as well but it's also like informational and like trying to retain everything so i thought that was really interesting for people with hoarding disorder they are collecting for the sake of having value even though we may not see it as any value at all like wrappers and handouts so they're going to continue to collect until there's no space at all for example like a coffee table you can put two cups on but once they have filled the entire thing you won't be able to use the coffee table anymore a true person with hoarding disorder does not have their items organized and categorized with having specific places for their specific items and a really fun tip for you guys as well hoarding actually doesn't start automatically it's actually very rare because of the behaviors that starts when they are in their teenage years from 10 to 13 which is actually pretty normal it's very rare for someone who is above the age of 40 to have a hoarding disorder so it starts at a very young age normally with people with hd have difficulties in problem solving and informational processing as well. So as I said in the beginning about collecting and kind of like the way of the, all of the things, the types of items that people who have hoarding disorder, it's not a specific theme at all. The method of acquiring it, that's not in a planned fashion. Because normally when people collect, you're seeking out. You're gonna go out and specifically grab this rare item at all and the appearance of the home it's very disorganized if you guys have seen that show on tlc it's like housing hoarders it's like a hoarding show and like you cannot like step in one section and then in another section and the life impact for someone with hoarding disorder the efforts to get rid of those items causes major distress and spending may be excessive causing financial distress as well and this can cause conflict in your social relationships family relationships in addition to withdrawing from society now i think the most important thing for this in the future for whoever talks about anyone who loves collecting items let's say hygiene items for example i love collecting bath and body works products i love buying things just for my collection to grow there's nothing wrong with that and i think the fact is that many people take hoarding disorder or the word hoarding not as literal as it should be by definition from the dsm-5 because oh like you have like 10 shower gels you're a hoarder like you don't need that many shower gels i feel like if you love something and you want to collect it because you love like a product per se or like how you do it i don't think you are here to judge people on how they collect items for say like many people love collecting baseball cards and if you have like a hundred pieces of cards that you've been collecting for like the last uh year i don't know how hard it is to collect baseball cards it wouldn't be as a big of amount because it's just like, oh, it's just look at my little little stack of baseball cards. But because of these items are so big per se, people are like, this is such a waste of space. Like, don't do it. Like, I'm just here to judge you. And I think it's also important for like people with makeup. If you love makeup, I am not trying to like burn anyone in any community. If you love makeup and you have a hundred items of makeup, why is it like not the same for people who also love hygiene as well? Just because our items look bigger per se doesn't mean that we are hoarders, okay? So they're totally different, all right? Um, please try to not to use it interchangeably. Kind of like how people are downplaying hoarding and that's just like, oh, you're just collecting so many things because you're just doing it. And I'm just like, why are you here to judge? You know what I'm saying? Anyways, I did want to mention this question as well because this kind of is like a two-parter video. And this is from Lexi. She asked me, can I make a video about if I ever feel overwhelmed with my collection or how I make sure that I have a collection that doesn't overwhelm myself. And 
she mentioned that how it does stress her a little bit which is good which means she's not a hoarder because <laughs> people who have hoarding disorder they don't feel overwhelmed or stressed about their little belongings and such so my tips on keeping my collection on tip top shape and how i try not to feel overwhelmed and pressured and stressed from the immaculate amount i'm not trying to brag at all but <laughs> I think the first tip is to make sure that you buy the products that you like. She mentioned about how she always wants to try to get like the new products are coming in and she's always stuck with the old stuff. Try to get products that you know for sure that you will love, that you will use. And also consider the fact about how much storage you have. Let's say that you have a bathroom and then just your room. If you can fit all the products that you get into your room and then you also try to use up some products, then it's all gooch, like you're good to go. It's all fine, it's all dandy. Another specific tip that I would say is kind of like know what kind of collector that you are going to be, especially for hygiene products. Are you going to intend to collect to keep them as valuables? Like maybe ha owning a shower gel that's gonna be in your collection for more than five years? If so, kind of retaliate on like what do you think is like the most limited edition, most exclusive product there? Because I believe if you're just going to collect products but then also try to use it up there's like a community for that bath and body works project use it up videos and there's also people that just collect just to collect and kind of figure out where you are i'm like right in the middle <laughs> so i love collecting items but i also love using it up because i hate wasting things so if you're like the same as me don't be overstressed by how much you buy per se but kind of be aware of like what you have make sure you take an inventory i love using excel sheets google sheets are really nice too write down all the fine fragrance mists you have write down all the lotions you have put an inventory number to it kind of have like a visual per se and if you also want to get all of your products and put it on your bed on the floor just so you can physically see everything because all of my products right now are sporadically in different areas of my room and in my bathroom because of how i like to organize it if you do that and then you see all the products, you're like, okay, well, I might need to take a step back on how much I buy. Maybe you're not doing financially well as well. I don't want you guys to like get new products and then like break your budget. I think that's the last thing I want you guys to do because my channel, I love spending the low, low. I love helping you guys saving your coin. We gotta, you know, finesse. You know what I'm saying? We're not gonna let these companies make us pay full price. No way, Jose. Going back to the question of how to uh, not make yourself feel so overwhelmed, I think having an organization system that is perfect for you, maybe go out to the dollar store. They have really nice organization, little uh, cast baskets. Also check out TJ Max, Marshalls, and those other stuff so you can get really good quality organization little bags and not break your bank as well i think having a collection but also keeping it nice and tidy it doesn't always have to be nice and tidy because honestly you guys mine is not <laughs> not all the time i'm a very busy person i know many of you guys are as well with school with work with kids with no kids with doggies with cats everything goes crazy you don't know what's gonna happen next so as much as i want to kind of be like oh just stop buying like that's not gonna happen because look at me i tried to do a no buy and that did not work at all like I know, I know. So I think also trying to implement kind of like a rule for yourself, maybe try doing a very less remorseful low buy. So if you finish up a lotion, maybe you can do a one out, two in. If you get, if you really like not too strict on how you purchase things, finish a lotion and then you can buy two more lotions. Or if you really want to be a little bit more strict, do finish five lotions bring in one lotion like it just depends on how much space how much money if your collection does start causing you a lot more stress i think that you can downsize it or you can try not to be super influenced by people like me who love trying to find like the new exclusive things because honestly guys there's going to be a day when you stop into tj maxx and there's going to be like this limited edition exclusive product and then you're on like this no buy and you can't buy it because you told yourself you can't buy it and you break it because it's like super limited so 
honestly keep yourself grounded try to write down kind of like a set of rules for yourself because honestly i couldn't stop at all so i actually want to ask you guys how do you guys try to maintain your collection help a girl out help lexi out um leave your comments down below i hope you guys like this video this was a very informational video i did look at my computer half the time and i did stutter for like the last 30 minutes but it's gonna be cut out because so you guys won't even notice but i I think that this was a very much needed video, especially for someone who has the word self-care in it because I'm not going to let you guys be overwhelmed so hard to the point where you can't even take care of yourself because at the end of the day, we're trying to smell good, we're trying to smell fresh, we're trying to clean ourselves, smelling good all day, but also on a budget and as well as not overwhelming ourselves with all the work and what life has to offer for us, all right? Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any more questions about hoarding and why you shouldn't be using it, don't use the, the word hoarding on my channel, ban. She's canceled, we don't like that word. If you, Unless you use it in a very correct way, then that's okay, fine, yeah. But if you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below. I love responding to you guys. I love talking to you guys. It's been, take, it's been taking me a little bit while because of school. But um, if you have any other uh, additional things to say, go ahead and say it because we're all ears. It's a judgment-free zone unless you um, shame on me because I'll probably cry a river. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Bye guys.